Uh, hey everyone, so uh, my name is Raymond and I'm here to present uh, Transit Quality and Equity, which is my submission to the Urban Data Challenge. So a little bit of introduction. My name is Raymond Suteyote. I'm currently a uh, student at the School of Information, UC Berkeley. Um, I'm focusing my studies on human-computer interaction and interaction design, but I also have a uh, background in visual design, web development, uh, and I'm also interested in data visualization, equity issues, as well as transportation and city planning, which I've been exploring a lot uh, during my time at UC Berkeley. So kind of all this background and all this um, skills and knowledge kind of uh, led me to this question, how does how well does a transit system serve the diverse populations in the city? And in, a, in my attempt to answer that question, I created this uh, database, um, which we will look into a little bit more uh, later in the presentation. Um, but before that, I kind of want to talk a little bit about the tools as well as the process that I went through in creating the database. So in the middle of all of this is, of course, D3, which is why we're all here, right? Um, for me, the choice to use D3 was um, natural because I have some background in web development um, and uh, it, it's just not a, kind of like a big jump for me at least. And of course, uh, while using D3, we also use other web technologies like, is the mic working? Yeah. Uh, other web technologies like HTML and CSS, SVG, as well as jQuery in, uh, to create the interface and a lot of the uh, different interactions that you can do with, with the uh, database. Uh, and those are the tools that I use for the uh, front end presentations. And on the back end, I use uh, MySQL to help me process the data, as well as QGIS to help me convert um, some of the geodata into a format that's understandable by D3, which is uh, GeoJSON. So the process um, went a little bit like this. Of course, we started with the idea um, you know, the question that you saw earlier in the presentation, how well does the transit system serve the different uh, populations in the city? And then we looked into uh, data sources. Uh, my partner, Sandra Lee, helped me a lot with that. Um, she also has some background in city planning, so you know, she had a little bit of knowledge in um, data sources that might be helpful in, um, in this database. And processing the raw data in, uh, so that we can kind of uh, collect all the different data and then present them in a consistent manner, and building prototypes and testing it before we submitting it. So this seems like a pretty straightforward process, right? So great, awesome. But behind the scenes, there's a lot of this going on, right? <laughs> a couple of the issues that I had was one, finding data sources. In the context of the US, uh, we had a pretty good uh, data that we want to use in addition to the transit data because we have the census which is pretty comprehensive. Uh, but in the context of you know, Zurich and Geneva, the data is not as available. And processing large amounts of data, um, as uh, the first presentation kind of mentioned, there's millions and millions of lines of data. And you know, how, how do we deal with that uh, in a way that's uh, quick and, and, and easy? And dirty data, um, different cities have different specifications to um, uh, convey the same idea and some of them are missing, and some of them uh, doesn't really work. So trying to clean those data and make it work for our purpose. And last but not least, um, although I have had a little bit of experience with D3 before, this was my first time um, delving into D3 Geo and doing GIS, so that was uh, kind of a big learning curve for me as well. Uh, so let's do a quick demo here. So this is what you might see when you first load the visualization. So you just see all uh, the different dots um, that represent uh, the stops. And if you look at the legend, you can see that the bigger the dot is, the more frequent the service is, and the darker um, the color is, the longer the delay is. And while you... Uh, hover over a certain stop, you can see the information, what stop that is, and you can trigger the different routes on and off. And you can also trigger the different um, demographic data here. So for example, um, we're using the census tracts to divide up the map, and then using the, again, information from the census. So when you see the um, 
uh, the areas that are dark green. That means that it has a pretty high level of poverty. And the areas that are light has a lower uh, level of poverty, and so on and so forth. And with Zurich, uh, we try to do similar things, but again, given the limitation of the data available, we kind of use income data instead of uh, poverty level, which is um, an okay proxy. Uh, we would definitely prefer if we had a uh, poverty level, but you know, got to deal with what we have. Um, and again, same functionality, um, same idea. And then with Geneva, we actually did not have it at the time of the uh, competition, but I just received um, a similar data uh, a few weeks ago, which I plan to integrate in this uh, database. Um, so in this case, we can't really trigger um, like the demographic data and, and whatnot, like we can with uh, Zurich and San Francisco. And all of this is actually the tree. So the map, as you can see, is pretty bare bones. It's just uh, the shapes. It doesn't have any kind of like street um, information or, or anything like that. Um, it's all just the tree um, objects. And that's, um, that's the gist of it uh, when it comes to uh, the final product, the final visualization. Um, and uh, with that said, I believe that is all I have. Um, so thanks for your uh, attention. And if you'd like to reach me, you can find me on LinkedIn or go to my personal website. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? Yeah. Yes. What did you learn about any correspondence between poverty levels and availability of transport? public transportation? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I actually kind of uh, delved into that question a little bit in one of my classes last semester, and the answer is actually kind of mixed. Um, just given the uh, geography of San Francisco, so for example, areas like Chinatown get a pretty good amount of coverage, right, just because of its proximity to downtown, but of course uh, the poverty level is pretty high. Um, so the answer is it's mixed. It's not uh, such a straightforward relationship. Um, I think one of the questions that kind of made me want to try and explore this area is um, my experience in Chicago. I used to live in Chicago for a number of years. And um, I think in some ways there's a clearer relationship in, in Chicago because uh, areas in f the far west side and the far south side didn't really have great level of service. So I, I just want to kind of see how it looks like in SF. But I think it's a little bit uh, muddy, the relationship in SF. I would think we also have a challenge in kind of normalizing the definition of poverty across different cities. So Absolutely. Like the San Francisco definition of poverty, which can be different from like the Chicago definition. Or Absolutely. The Swiss definition. So I'm just wondering if you, if you thought about that as yeah, uh, so in trying to kind of um, answer that question, in the beginning we were just going to use income, right? Because we felt, well, income, that's the more straightforward. But then you're right. I mean, the definition of poverty in SF is probably different because the income is so staggered here. So we decided to switch to um, uh, poverty level. And we also consider things like housing um, in addition to income. So, uh, and that's why we also was trying to find kind of like a similar set of data with the other cities, but we couldn't quite do it. Uh, but you're absolutely right. I mean, um, in some ways, uh, different cities will have different characteristics. And in some ways, these visualizations are incomplete because you kind of have to view it in context, so. How did you choose which uh, stock students would actually match the Um Basically, What's, uh, what's on the data. Um, and I think like some of them might, be, uh, might not be included. Um, so I didn't deal as much with uh, selecting what stops to include. I mean, obviously some, some are really small and may not show up as much. 
um, like the one up here, that's super tiny, right? But it's there. So there might be a lot of cases where it's really small, but it's there. So I, I, I wasn't really doing any like picking and choosing as far as like the stops go. I just uh, dealt with what was in the data set. Tools or techniques for data cleansing? Um, well, for me, I use MySQL um, to process a lot of data and I'm not sure. That, that's just what I use because uh, uh, I was familiar with it. Um, do you have any? No, I, I was just curious. I mean, so just a bunch of different queries to get things normalized? Or? Yeah, basically. So I just, because uh, we were given like a big CSV file and then I just convert it, import it into the database and then do all my data processing from um, there. Um, yeah, what that? are your thoughts about the fact that the poverty data is associated with the spaces and the bus data is associated with the junctions? Because like, you have yeah. a, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, well, I mean, I think uh, the census track is big, right? So, I mean, if we just look at it from uh, that level, again, I think in some ways this visualization show that it's incomplete because, um, again, the census track is big and uh, it might not be even all throughout. Um, so I think that if I were to improve it, I would maybe look into uh, areas that are e even smaller and more specific just to get a better picture. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's definitely a, uh, an area of improvement. Before you went into this project, did you have any preconceived suspicions on how this data would pan out? Uh, I thought that it might be a little bit more uniform just because of how big San Francisco is, or how small, rather, because it's just seven miles by seven miles, so I thought that it would be a lot more even. Um, again, just like comparing it to Chicago, which I'm more familiar with Chicago is huge, right? So, uh, in, in areas that are less uh, less densely populated, there might be a lower service. But I thought that it would be a little bit more um, uniform. But again, as you can see, the uh, obviously the downtown area and Soma is more dense. Um, so, in some ways, it makes sense because you know it's downtown and it's more densely populated. Uh, but I just thought that it would be a little bit more uniform. What are some other indicators of poor quality or bad quality when it comes to public transit that maybe you could get data for but the city could start collecting? Because um, idling, I'm not really sure. Do you mean like the bus is late? Like yeah, so I mean the kind of the metric that we're using is frequency and uh, delay. Um, of course, there are other metrics like headway uh, that might be a better proxy and also uh, like different level of service at different times of the day. Um, I think uh, dots on the bus, the presentation that you just saw kind of show that level of service varying throughout the day. I think that's also a good proxy. Um, uh, and maybe like weekday versus weekend service. Um, I mean, I I wonder if uh, somebody who's more well versed in like transportation issues would be better suited to answer that question. Um, but I would imagine things like um, uh, headway might be uh, kind of like a good metric to show. Uh, yeah. 